This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the CEO of Aguila Copper Corporation, Mr. Mark Saxon. Mark, heck of a day in the market today. How are you? Gerardo, yes, great to talk and great to see the markets up again. And I think we're having this uh, the next round of post-COVID bounce, which is great to see. And uh, and for Aguilar in particular. Thanks. Well, let's let's talk Aguila. You you wasted no time right after the name change to Aguila Copper, acquiring yourself a copper, zinc, gold, um, you know, res- not, and I shouldn't say resource resources in Manitoba. I want you to provide the context there. The market clearly likes the fact that you've signed a binding option agreement. Can you provide some context there? Yeah, most certainly, Gerardo. And and I guess you know we've been looking for projects for quite a long time now and, and perhaps even 12 months. And so um, the first half of last year, we, we kind of started the process and the market, I guess, was a little bit hot at that stage. And uh, we looked at plenty of deals and looked at lots of good ideas, but we really wanted something with a strong technical upside. We wanted something with a development upside, let's say, where – we're sitting in a jurisdiction where things really can develop in a, in a sensible time frame. So um, Aguila, and, and yeah, you've noticed the name change there to uh, Aguila Copper now and, and um, reflecting what we're doing in the future. I guess the history of Aguila was about gold and, uh, and that was about sort of gold in South America where it really began. And, um, but I guess my, my passion and, and my, my recent history has been in battery metals and energy transition metals. And um, yeah, as you know, um, I've been involved with some partners on, great rare earth discoveries and graphite and lithium. And and so it really felt time um, to come into copper now because the energy transition that's happening around us is not going to happen without copper. So that's been our near-term focus, and that's really delivered some really exciting projects, um, both in the U.S. and Canada. Let's talk about the project that you just signed the option agreement on. Obviously, there's some history there. Um, there's an all-weather 78-kilometer road. There's power. Um, there's a community that has experience with, with, with mining. It seems like it checks a lot of boxes, Mark. Yeah, it really does, Gerardo. And, and I guess um, when we've been looking for projects, we're looking for the deposit styles that, that turn into mines. And um, when you think about that, there's one style called volcanic hosted massive sulfide deposits. And so we really like those deposits because as you say, they're, they're copper, they're zinc, they're gold, they're silver, um, they're high grades, they support underground mining, fairly low environmental impact and footprints because of that. And so we bank, began to accumulate ideas on, on BHMS deposits across North America. And in that process, um, yeah, there's obviously two very major camps that sit within Manitoba and, and kind of overlap into Saskatchewan, which is, um, it's a belt of rocks that we call the Trans-Hudson, Trans- Trans-Hudson orogeny, my apologies. And that's kind of a north-south belt. It's a bit like the Andes, I guess, or the Himalayas, um, but, but an old version of that. And so sitting in that belt, we've got the Flin Flon camp. And we've got the Snow Lake camp, which are yeah, major mining districts. Um, between them and between the region, there's there's more than 60 deposits. There's more than 100 years of mining. So you kind of know you're in the right kind of jurisdiction of where you want to be. In. So we looked at that jurisdiction and sitting out um, sort of in between those big camps is another camp called uh, the Sheridan District. And, and Sheridan has had a pretty good history of work. It's had some major mining. Um, however, when we did the accumulation of data, we saw, okay, there's been no press releases from this district for for about 10 years. And and that kind of was a bit of a head scratcher when you've got great deposits and historic mines. Why has it been forgotten? And so we dug into that history and and we managed to um, put back together the ownership and um, and start that process with the private owner and managed to do a really great deal and acquire um, that district really in its entirety. This is just a binding option agreement. I understand there's still some due diligence to, to, to be had. So it's, it's important that we qualify that aspect of the deal and the negotiations. But I also know that you're never one to just option a project just to be busy, right? I know you look through hundreds of these things before you can actually identify one or two that are worth pursuing. What was it about this project in particular that really kind of stuck out to you? Yeah, I guess um, the experience that we've had in in other jurisdictions has sort of taught us that to to be in a district where you really can develop a mine is important. And so we're certainly in that in Manitoba. Manitoba is a great mining jurisdiction, lots of active mines, and and we cross over into into Saskatchewan as well, and we see the same thing of lots of mine development. 
Um, the thing that really caught our eye, I suppose, in this um, in this asset, and uh, as as you say, it's um, yeah, we do have due diligence to do. However, we have certainly run through the big list of boxes and we've ticked most of them. There's only a few left to tick, and, and it was time to go public with the transaction, I guess, because of it. Um, so when you look at the uh, the past mining in the district, there's been um, one major mine, and, and that's kind of in two two different separate ore bodies. Um, and that's called uh, Sherrett Gordon, and, and which was the mining company that, uh, that mined it. And uh, so that was production of 7.7 million tonnes, uh, an average grade of uh, about uh, uh, 2.5 copper, 2.8 zinc, um, about half a gram of gold, and about 30 grams per tonne of silver. So that was in two separate ore bodies, and uh, the area in between those two ore bodies really hasn't been explored. And that mine was closed in, in 1955. And, and you can only imagine the difference in in processing technologies, in discovery technologies, in um, in cutoff grades um, over that period. So going back and looking at that obviously is an amazing opportunity. But then these VHMS deposits, they occur in camps. And so there's a whole range of other targets, um, some of which have been drilled and some of which are resources um, across the district. And so we're now looking at each of those and, and finding ways to, to bring those forward as well into the company. And and uh, yeah, subject to due diligence, I think it's a uh, yeah, it's an amazing good package that um, better than what we hope to get, I guess, in the, um, when we're out there looking for ideas. Advanced stage, great infrastructure. You understand the deposit type. Um, it seems like a no-brainer on the surface. The market certainly has responded well. Congratulations! I suspect you're still looking, Mark, as always. Uh, thanks, Gerardo. Yes, we're we're still looking. We've got someone uh, sitting at the conference now in Reno looking at ideas and. And uh, yeah, we're always out there and, and we're putting together a really strong portfolio in the company now. And uh, yeah, the, the coming year looks really strong. Excellent. Thank you for the update. Looking forward to having you back on to provide further updates on this and obviously other projects that you're looking at. Thank you again. Thanks, Gerardo. Chat to.